Hello, hello. It's Turkey Day, 2020. The infamous 2020. Rosemary Furick has made a request for a story about Thanksgiving. So here we go. Now the Thanksgiving I remember best is when I was nine years old. It was the usual Thanksgiving. Mom was in the kitchen stuffing everything but my pajamas into the turkey. My little sister was helping her. Cheryl was yakking on the phone with her boyfriend. And my dad, well, my dad was in his study with the door shut tight and everybody knew what that meant. It was Thanksgiving grace time. You see, my dad wasn't much on talking in front of groups of people, but for some reason, every turkey day, he wrote this long thing that's kind of half a prayer, half a speech. And of course, the time he picks to give this preach is right before dinner, you know, and mom has just gotten done with five hours of cooking. Everybody's hungry enough to eat a moose. I was sick of being cooped up in the house, and so when Mom asked me if I'd run down to Riley's to get a few last-minute things, I said, sure, Mom, I'd love to, so fast that she dropped the spoon in the gravy pan. She said we needed some frozen peas, some milk, some cottage cheese, and a baster for the turkey. I asked a what for the turkey? And Mom just told me to tell Butch I needed a turkey baster. It was too hard to explain. To make sure I got the cottage, small curd kind of cottage cheese. Two. I knew exactly why she wanted the small curds. Small curd cottage cheese doesn't taste any different than large curd. But that's the kind Colleen likes, and if you make the mistake of bringing home the big stuff, she throws this huge conniption fit, so small courage it was. I grabbed some money from the cupboard and sailed out the door. Do you want a list? My mom yelled, do I want a list? I have one of the most developed brains of any homo sapien in the universe. I think I can remember four things at the store. Of course, the turkey baster was a weird one and kept messing up my memory system. So I ped as I pedaled down my to Riley's on my bike, I put all the things into a little song to help me remember. Don't forget the milk. Don't forget the cottage cheese. Don't forget to brush your hair now. Don't forget the peas. We need a turkey baster for this world champion taster. Thank you for my earlobes and thanks for saying my dog. I just threw the thank you stuff in there as kind of a label that this was my Thanksgiving shopping list in case this particularly particular memory list pops up on my next trip down to Riley's. I threw my earlobes in because it had two syllables of my dog. Well, I threw my dog in there because Sam's my buddy. Riley's is this little neighborhood store that's crowded all the time. You didn't get your big groceries there, just the little stuff that you forgot at the big place. And there was always scads of people, but it was about four o'clock in the afternoon and everybody must have been home eating supper. There was one car in the parking lot, an old station wagon. I mean an old station wagon with fins on the back and rust all over. There was cardboard on the back window instead of window and red tape over one of the back lights instead of the red plastic. The windows were kind of fogged up, but I could see the car was 
filled with people, little kids mostly, and mom and dad and grandma in the car in the front seat. It looked like they were chowing down right there in the automobile. I know what that's like. Sometimes Dad and I eat half the groceries on the way home from the store. I went inside and got my shopping list. Don't forget the milk. Don't forget the cut cheese. Don't forget to brush your hair now. Don't forget the peas. We need a turkey baster for this world champion taster. Thank you for my earlobes and Thank you for my dog. Now, Mom was right about Butch. He knew exactly what a turkey baster was. It's a tube with a squeeze ball on the end for squirting water at your sister while you're doing dishes. At least, that's what I used the old one for. I picked up the rest of the stuff and took it up to the counter. There was this girl at the counter about my age with four hostess Twinkies. Ha! Dessert for the whole family, huh? I joked. She looked at me and smiled. Wait, 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 wait a second. She looks serious. You, you mean you're really having those for dessert at home for Thanksgiving dinner? She nodded. Now, I like Twinkies as well as the next guy, but dessert on Thanksgiving. There was something about the way she didn't say anything that made me think maybe she was from another country. Now, do you speak English? She giggled, nodded her head. Where are you from? She said she was Kurdish. Her family was from Turkey. Kurdish. Last year in history class, we learned all about the group of nomads named Kurds. They traveled around the country, from country to country, looking for food and work. I watched through the store window as she headed back to the car outside. The man in the front seat opened up a big bag of burgers and stuff and handed them out to everybody. Oh man, these guys were eating their Thanksgiving dinner in a car. They can't do that. It's un-American. They could have dinner at our house. We got a big turkey. And plenty of mashed potatoes and stuff. I asked Butch if I could use the phone and I called home to ask it was okay. Colleen answered the phone. I told her to ask mom if it was okay to bring home some curds from Turkey for dinner. Now thinking back, it may have sounded kind of like a strange question, but Colleen gets into some weird stuff and she just gave the usual, okay, I'll go ask mom. You could hear the potato masher mashing in the background. Mom yelling at Cheryl to get back into the kitchen to help. I couldn't quite hear what Colleen asked, but pretty soon she came back to the phone and, and asked me, Small curds? Now, that did seem like a silly question. But I looked out the window again and said, Uh... Yeah, mostly. Colleen yelled back to Mom, Yeah, mostly. And I could hear Mom just yell, Yes, 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 that's fine. Great. I knew Mom wouldn't let me down. I rushed out to the car and invited them home for dinner with me. The man in the front seat looked kind of suspicious. I said it was okay. I knew their daughter. I looked at her and smiled. I said, it was okay, really. I just live a block down the road. The man said he couldn't. Now, I tell the truth about 99 times out of 100, but this just happened to be the 100th day, and I told them 
we had been expecting my cousin's family of exactly eight people from Des Moines, Iowa, and they didn't show up, and that we have all this food, and they just have to come. The man still said no, but the woman next to him in the front seat smiled, said something to him in another language. He shrugged his shoulders and smiled back, and then he nodded his head. Cool. I handed them the turkey baster and stuff and jumped on my bike and told them to follow me. On my bike, I kept looking back to make sure they were coming, you know. Uh, but all I could see was their car in this big blue cloud of smoke. Finally, we pulled into the driveway while I was waiting for them to get out of the car. My mom opened the front door. What are you waiting for? She yelled. I, I need the turkey baster. By this time, everyone had piled out of the car, all eight of them. I got the grocery sack, and when I turned around, Mom's eyes were the size of silver dollars. The, these are, are the Kurds, Mom. They're, they're, they're from Turkey. Mom looked at them, and then back at me, and then back at them, and then back at me like one of those silver balls in a pinball machine. Along the way, I started to get the feeling that there had been some kind of bad connection on the phone. And just then, our bad connection walked outside. Colleen. Oh, no, I thought. This is horrible. My mom had misunderstood Colleen, probably. She's going to throw a fit, and these poor people's Thanksgiving is going to be worse than it was before I even got there. And then Mom did something pretty strange. She laughed. I don't mean just one of those nervous <laughs> kind of laughs. I, I mean a real Santa Claus <laughs> kind of laugh. She waved him in. Come in, come in. Dinner's almost ready. Mom sat us all down in the front room with a hot cider and disappeared with Cheryl into the dining room for about ten minutes. About that time, Dad wandered out of the study. He took one look at all the people in the living room and did a quick trot into the kitchen with Mom. My new friends didn't speak very good English, so I just talked with the asthma about stuff. Finally, Cheryl said it was time, and we went to the table. Well, we went into the room, but the room was all table. I peeked underneath the tablecloth, and there were card tables from the closet patched with our regular table to make it look like one monstrous table. Dad's desk chair was at the table. Grandma's old rocking chair was at the table. If my old baby chair would have been around, I'm sure I would have been sitting in it. Cheryl was talking with the older kids, and Mom was chatting to everybody as easy as pie. Finally, it was time for grace. We joined hands around the table, and all eyes settled on Dad. But Dad seemed a little lost. Well, not a little lost. Dad looked like the vacant store dime store downtown. I mean, he was a goner. We waited for about 30 seconds for Dad to collect himself. I looked up again and realized that Dad was not going to be collecting himself anytime soon. And, well, I did what any kid would do who surprised his family with a stable full of strangers on Thanksgiving. I stepped up and said grace. Thank you for the milk. Thank you for the cottage cheese. Thank you for the turkey, God. And thank you for the peas. The turkey's looking dinky, boy. I hope you brought those Twinkies. Thank you for Mom's sense of humor. Thanks for all our friends. Happy Turkey Day.